What's going on veterans, this is JB coming to you live from Atlanta, Georgia. I am 100% Navy Desert Storm veteran. And today's message, we're going to talk about smart money versus your existing retirement money. Um, because most people are having a job and they're using their pre-tax money to invest into their 401k balance so they can have a retirement on, on top of their Social Security. OK, so when I talk about veterans disability, I talk about an unfair advantage. You serve the greatest country in the world and you deserve some unfair advantage. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. You wore the uniform. You, you went on diff different duty stations, different uh, missions and things of that nature. You are a special individual. I want to congratulate you for doing that and thank you for your service. But it's sad to know that most veterans have something they, they, they they're undiagnosed with financial illiteracy. The reason why I'm saying that you're undiagnosed is because if you really understood the unfair advantage about the smart money that's available to you, you will be more active at making sure that you at the highest value that you and your family deserve. Absolutely right. So let's talk about this. Let's look at the real numbers because I'm a firm believer about numbers. People lie, numbers don't lie. So we wanna go according to the US Census uh, of 2020. This is what the average age is making. This is age. On a working a regular job, nine to five, 40 years of their life. The average household, two people working between the ages of 55 and 59 is $73,000 a year. I want you to pay close attention to this. From age 60 to 64, you got an income drop. It drops down almost $10,000. Age 65 to 69, it drops another $10,000. Age 70 to 74, it drops down another $3,000. Now, this is the biggest drop. You know, your average life expectancy, ladies and gentlemen, is about 78 years of age. We're going to round it up to 80. Well, ages 75 plus, you take almost a $16,000 hit. Now, I want to ask you this question. Is the price of gas going down or going up? When I was going, growing up, I could, it, it cost 78 cents for regular unleaded to, to gas up a vehicle. Today is $3. Now, 19, when I was born in 1973, I think I was mowing the lawn at probably 10 or 11. So 83 to 2021, how many years is that? 17, uh, 38 years, almost four decades, right? So in 40 years, we got, I don't know what the percentages are going up on fuel costs, but we, you get the picture about inflation. So wouldn't it be safe to say whatever your age is, I'm 48, to 75, that's almost another 30, 30, uh, 30 years, so that's another three decades. Would you say that gas is gonna be up or down? Would you say that your housing is gonna be up or down in three decades? Would you say the cost of food is gonna be up or down? Absolutely, it's gonna go up. Everything goes up over time. The sad thing is that with you not having financial literacy, you don't recognize the trend that happens. As thing goes, things goes up in value or cost, your income is steadily doing this the whole time. It's going down. No matter what job you're working with, no matter what employer you're employed with right now, your income is gonna go backwards. Now, the reason why I brought this to your attention because most people are in denial about filing their claims. Oh, I'm not injured or, oh, man, I could wait. or And you're just donating free tax smart money to the federal government uh, for nothing, maybe because you're just feeling philanthropic. I'm not sure. But if you know this, if you see, I'm a firm believer. If you know what's ahead in the future, then you can kind of plan ahead to be uh, proactive instead of reactive, ladies and gentlemen. So in other words, the average American worker income is going to go backwards the more they age and the cost of living is going to continue to go up. If it's not true, if the cost of living doesn't go up, and I'm sorry I hit the lampshade here, if the cost of living is not going up, why do the federal government give Social Security an inflation income proof every January? Why do they give VA disability an increase every January? If, if, if inflation is not a factor, if things are not getting more expensive year after year, why do they raise your income? Let me just tell you about my smart money. When I got my first check it was 3106 a month 100 percent 
All right, that was my first year's income. This past January, when we kicked over, it went to 31, 46, 32. All right, do you see that your income is, why do, you, why do you think I call it smart money? All right, this December 31st, it's gonna go up 33, 32 and some change. Now, I wanna ask you a question. Do you have an unfair advantage by it being a high value uh, disability uh, 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 recipient of compensation? Is your income going down or your income going up? This is the most advantageous vehicle on the planet for any American. But you know what? There's only 20 million veterans on, in, in this whole United States. There's a small group of individuals that have this unfair advantage to have your income continuously increasing. Now, let's say you still held a job and you had age 75. Or, yeah, 75, when it went down to $33,000. All right, I'm writing backwards. Sometimes I got dyslexia. 33K, all right? And you know right now, at 100%, that's 40,000. That's 40,000. 40,000 tax-free dollars. Now, everybody knows the Social Security, if you make some more money on a job, still working, they deduct that money. So you get a deduction in your Social Security if you, you know, talk about Social Security. But this is just, if, if you know, I don't know, they, they're, they're factoring all, all a lot of income together. I don't know if it's going to be 401k, this, the dividends, along with your Social Security. But this is what, wouldn't it make sense to have this, the 40k here, it's going to be more than that 30 years from now. We already know that if I've only been paid for the last three years, what do you think this 100% permanent total is going to be? Now, do you see the value of this income? You're injured. You're hurt. You're undiagnosed. You've been filing these claims. You got, if I go into e-benefits, you go to historical claims. How many uh, claims that you filed have been denied? If I look at your pending disabilities without the knowledge Without the knowledge of Title 38 Part 4 and without the help of somebody to help you guide you through the process on what you should do from A to Z, you're going to throw away a lot of your money that you're going to need in retirement. You're going to throw it away. And I don't know what the excuse you're going to give your children or your grandchildren or your spouse. Some of you are going to take the consultation that I give you and tell me that they need to speak with their spouse. Some of you are going to say, let me think about. There is nothing to think about if you know that the average American is going to struggle in retirement. There is nothing to think about. Absolutely nothing to think about. Now, probably if you got the argument of saying your income is not protected. It's going to be reexaminated, right? You're going to go in for reexamination. Let's talk about that for a second, because I want you to understand that the payments that you're currently receiving right now is considered to be temporary. When you separate from the military, that rating uh, is going to be reevaluated after 12 months, the second six months. Second six months. This way is written in the title law. So really, technically 12 months. All right. Now, when you get adjudicated, when you've been outside the military, just, just filing a claim like I did. All right. They're going to go back to your intent to file date. In my case, November 2018. All right. They're going to do this. Not less than two years, re-examine you. Not more than five years. What that means is basically they're gonna re-examine you every five years on the rating. So whether or not you got 10% or 100%, you are subject to re-examination. So your, your money is not protected, okay? Now, when is your money protected that you could count it in as your retirement? The money is counted in once you hit the age of 55. The ripe old age of 55 is your target. The ripe old age of 55. Otherwise, you're going to keep getting reexaminated and you got to have the same symptoms. It can't show that it's improving. That's the reason why they're examining you to see if there's room for improvement and they will re-rate you. OK, and normally it's down from 100 percent to 90 percent, 100 percent to 80 percent. They do that by law. It is what it is. Now, another way that you can protect your smart, smart money before 55 is having a permanent total, a permanent total status. 
Permanent total status means that it's static and that your condition is not going to improve ever. Now, I am 100% permanent total. Permanent means permanently disabled. Total, total combined, 100% disabled. So my income of 3146 as of today is protected. And every increase, the 3332, is protected. How valuable is that? To know that you probably make very good money. You probably work at the post office. You got a retirement income from the post office. You're going to have uh, your social security check, but you're going to have an income that's going to continue to improve every January by congressional law. Those of you that are young in the 35 age to 45 age, and you think that you should not file, you are absolutely insane because if you know anything about retirement. The earlier that you do this, the better you're going to be in your retirement. I know you two probably say I'm too young to think about retirement, but let me just tell you, you think about the most prestigious zip codes where you live and ask yourself, could you live there in retirement? Because the only reason why you're in that neighborhood today is because you're currently going to work every single week, week after week, getting a paycheck every two weeks. If it wasn't for your labor going after that, you couldn't afford in your zip code. So, this income is not work. You're not working for this. So this in the investment world, this is sort of like an asset class. In the investment world, this is such as like an asset class, like real estate. You got to think you got to think smart. This is smart money, smart money. Smart money is tax free. Inflation. Proof, passive, meaning you're not working for it. You don't have to go out the door to be in your zip code. Passive income. And it's, um, what is it? Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it's, I was going to say, it's garnishment proof. Garnishment proof. You fought for the war. Now, think about all the other asset classes you got to invest in to make that kind of money. 33.32. How much you got to be in debt? Can anybody tell me anything else about asset classes? You got asset classes such as stocks, CDs, 401ks, which is back into stocks again. <laughs> okay. Your 401k is pre-taxed and then you pull it out, it's going to be taxed. Can anybody tell me? The most important asset class is real estate. Real estate. Preferably apartments. You got to have to replace 3332. I mean, to match it, you got to be on over 670 K in debt in an apartment building to make that kind of money. And all you have to do is sit back and do a consultation with me. Look at opportunities that's dealing with your specific case. See if we can find opportunities secondary. See if we can find some directs by ordering your service treatment records. And you can have smart money that's protected for the rest of your life. It's up to you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.